Good evening, y'all. It's Essential Gear. Welcome to the channel. I hope everybody's had a productive day. So I'm still brand new to YouTube, and I'm just kind of figuring it all out as I go. So if it's the first video of mine you've seen, go back and watch my introduction. It's called Another Gear Channel. Just kind of covers what I plan on doing here and what my purpose is as I see it. But this is just going to serve as a short introduction to a series I'll be putting out focusing on medical preparedness. And I'll be touching on how you should be integrating the medical side of things in your preps, what you need, where to put the stuff, and how we should be thinking about layering our medical capabilities just as you would with defensive measures. And I'm also going to talk about how you can develop your own personal algorithm, so to speak. And by that I mean what is your level of medical preparedness at any given time or place. For this, just think about what situations or locations would warrant an escalation in what you have on you. Now, really, you should be thinking about this all the time, not just for medical supplies. But for example, if you're at your house, some of the things you have on your person, outside of some core components, might be different versus if you're taking a trip or just in your vehicle in general. But in this video, I'm just going to talk about some IFACs I got from Refuge Medical. And it's going to cover really what goes in a basic IFAC and what their solution for that is. So now every once in a while, you find yourself in a place where you just love spending money there. And maybe it's your favorite diner or a small business where you just support the cause or the people running it. And that's how I feel about Refuge Medical. One of my principal goals for this channel is to provide actionable information or intel that may serve as a bit of a nudge towards being self-sufficient for most people. And this is why Refuge Medical was exceedingly fitting to be the first company or products I talk about. Now, some of the preliminary criteria for a company like this may be that they add value to the market. And I'll tell you how Refuge Medical does that. And the people running the company themselves are of similar morals. So Refuge Medical is a bit like an onion. The more and more I looked into them, the more I found, or really the more layers of that particular organization I peeled back. Now really I found them first by searching on YouTube for a good pack to keep all of my medical supplies in, which is going to end up in my vehicle. So really just a vehicle kind of medical go bag. The one I had was break in. I was trying to see what other people were doing. And one of the first video or videos that came up was a channel called Bear Independent. And it's run by a fellow named TJ Morris or Bear. And now I don't know the guy. He doesn't know me. All the information here I really just found on the internet in one way or the other. And it seems the whole purpose of his channel is based around the premise of getting away from the system, which really entails a whole lot of stuff and skills. So then the medical side of their operation is called Refuge Medical, Refuge Training. And they sell IFACs, medical supplies, have training classes, and everything seems to be made in America and backed by a pretty unique warranty. And when I say unique, I mean they will replace whatever components in that kit that you use to save a life. And I think their bags or their, their nylon gear is backed by a lifetime warranty as well. So pretty much if you break it or use it, they'll replace it, which I think is really awesome. And the kits themselves are tiered, meaning they're made for different levels of care, and are based on the Marchi algorithm. Now, I've never taken one of their training classes, but I do hear they're pretty legit. And everything they do seems to be based around their faith as well. So I'd recommend checking out Grindstone Ministries, which is their nonprofit arm of the organization. They do some pretty cool stuff like disaster relief and have a track record of helping people or those in need. So general rule of thumb is when I learn something from watching a short video that years of expensive school failed to teach me, there's probably some value there. And unless the dude is really good at pretending, he seems legit because experience is really the only way that some of the information he puts out could have been cultivated. So what we're going to do is I'm going to screen share my computer and we're going to take a look at the website to go through some of their products. Let's take a look at the website. This is refugemedical.com. And I'm doing this because I don't have all these kits on hand, and I think it would be useful for you guys to see what all they offer. So I do have the bare fact, I have the pocket kit, 
and the adventure kit. I'll probably go through those. Really, the adventure kit might get its own video because there's just so much in there to unpack. And if you don't want to see me ramble through this website, just skip ahead to where I'm uh, actually looking at the products. So the Bear Men, this is really just a scaled down version of the Bear Fac. So if you're really, if you're asking me, I guess, what, which one should I get, Essential Gear Guy? If I was to recommend one of these things, I'd probably tell you just get the Bear Fac when it's in stock. And I know it's sold out, and they're usually pretty good about this uh, email me when available. I did it. And I got an email, I think, the same day, like six hours later. And I bought it, and then it shipped the day after that. So it's like lightning quick shipping when it comes to medical supplies. So that's pretty cool. And maybe if you have the money, get the adventure kit, because it is a bit more expensive, but it does give you a lot more capabilities. So I'll talk about that later. So the SOB, maybe think about that one. If you run a battle belt for a living or just want to have that kind of capability on your belt. It's really optimized for that. This art kit, I don't know what this is. I haven't seen this yet. Maybe it's new. So what does that mean? Advanced rip away kit. So what makes it advanced? See it has a soft T on there. Maybe that's, maybe this is kit is more utilized for buddy care. It does have a strap on there for your headrest. I wonder if that comes with it. So it has these two inner pouches, okay. And the shears are oriented in a way where it looks like you can get to them when it's closed. Yeah, so why would you want that? Maybe this could be utilized in a triage situation where you need to get to your shears to cut away at multiple patients and see what their injuries are before you get into the actual components of the kit. Maybe that can be a philosophy of use for this kit. At a car accident, maybe. So what does this thing have in it? Do they have a... Yeah. So definitely multiple patient care. It has two gauzes, two chest seals. It's got some quick clot compression wrap. I'm assuming that's like a SWAT T. Let's look at the contents here. Yeah, that's S mark. So they usually use those in the hospital during uh, surgeries. But it's similar to a SWAT T. It can be used as an additional tourniquet. And I, I'm assuming that's what they're using it for. Same price point as the Bear Fac, and you can add a decompression needle. I was looking at this a couple of days ago, and yeah, you cannot add a needle here. I wonder why that is. Now, I'd want, personally, I'd want a needle to add to this Bear Fac. So moving right along, the Boo Boo Kit, really what it says, basic first aid, cuts, minor scrapes, no trauma capability there. So the Stomp Bag, I want to get my hands on one of these eventually. This is the SEAL Team Operational Medical Pack. It's meant for those 18 Delta and Teams guys. Let's see what they say about it. Okay, so this is the kit they take with them on their deployments. And by that, I mean with their uh, ministry or their um, disaster relief work. And it has an asterisk here saying IV fluids require a prescription. So yeah, some of the more interventional stuff, if you're not a doc, you might have a little harder of a time getting it, but it's not like you can't. <laughs> okay, so Atlantic Medical Supply, maybe that's where they get it from. I'll take a look at that later. And they're kind of alluding to, <laughs> yeah, so your doggy is feeling dehydrated. So what they're talking about here is sometimes you can get the stuff for pets that you can't get for humans. And let's see, the big, yeah, so the big canine kit does have a lock kit. It's got a uh, sodium chloride and a way to push fluids. So they're probably getting around that by marketing this as a canine kit. And maybe you want a, a way to run fluids. I mean, most of the stuff can be used on humans too. Really all of it. So I want to talk about the Mac 8. This is their mass casualty kit. So why would you want this? So if I was a pastor or a school superintendent, I'd think about getting two or four of these things. Why is that? I mean, just look at the look at what's happening. If you're in a place where the the statistic for having a mass casualty event is higher, I mean, you, you need to be ready for that. It's got tourniquets, it's got chest seals, so really it is set up for a multiple casualty event. And I'd really have my security team at the church um, trained on how to use this stuff, or maybe a group of teachers, and these would be strategically located throughout the building so that you have a high chance of getting to these items in the case your stool 
taking fire or whatever situation you're in. So that's kind of like the use for that. They do have this wound care bucket, which is, man, there's just tons of crap stuff in this thing. Look at that, 100 gauze pads. <laughs> Those are awesome. So the bleeding control kit. Let's talk about this. People are always asking me, I need to get some medical supplies, but I don't have any money. Well, maybe this is a good option for you because it's only 56 bucks. It has a tourniquet. It's got basic gauze and uh, no chest seal. But if you add some tape and you cut this packaging up, you can use that as a chest seal. It's a really good budget option. You can get a couple of these and place them in a few of your systems. So let's see what else they got. So birth and postpartum buckets. I have not seen these. So their bucket game is getting real strong. We've got all kinds of options now. Okay, so there's two different buckets here. There's a birthing bucket and a postpartum bucket. Very cool. Let's look at some of the contents. So they have a UR birth tray. So I'm assuming that's going to have some instruments in there. Iodine wipes. Headlamp. Yeah. Thinking ahead there. It might be a night or it might not have power. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but our grid is not the most robust system. Trash bag or trash bags. I'm having trouble talking today. I woke up today and I had like, I feel like I'm talking out of my throat. I don't know what happened. I'm filming this the day after the first part. If you notice a difference in my voice, that's why. And there's a drinking straw. So that's probably for mom. Now, a lot of times after women give birth, they get a lot of really bad muscle cramps and they're not going to want to move a whole lot. And you still want a way to get them fluids. So I'm assuming that's what the straws are for. And they even have a, a foot printer. Commemorative birth certificate. Yes, I mean, man. So if I was having a kid or if I had a group, you know, people are always having babies. And if any kind of event happens, this is a great way to prepare for that. Even for refugees. If you don't have refugee buckets, you can uh, probably do a lot of good having these in the event of any kind of event. That's all I'll say about that. So let's look at their components. They usually have a pretty good amount of stuff. Let's see what they got. Yeah, they have some softs in stock. They always usually have these surgical kits. Splinter out. Let's look at this page. Yeah, so a good amount of stuff. Not as much as they used to. I mean, that's just a supply chain thing. They're buying everything they can get their hands on from overseas. If you guys are... Uh, I don't know, in the medical industry, you're probably aware stuff is kind of getting harder to find. And by the way, if you need any of this stuff, kits, really anything, now's the time to get it. They even have some potassium iodate. Not to be confused, or to be confused with potassium iodide, which is usually a 65 milligram dosage. This is 170. And they do the same thing, just at a higher dose. They work a little bit different. They both block the thyroid. And there is some medical literature out on this. Just uh, do a Google search for the effects of potassium iodide versus iodate in the body after a nuclear event. And you'll just do, yeah, you'll find it. But I don't think the CDC approves this. Does that really mean anything nowadays? Not really. But I know they do use these in other countries, so I, I wouldn't really hesitate to use these in any kind of uh, event like that. But anyways, I'll be back in a second with an overhead shot to look at the rest of these kits. All right, guys, let's quickly go over the bare facts and the pocket kit. So why would you want a kit like this? And put shortly, with everything going on in the world, I think people really need to start thinking about becoming their own first responders. And these kits really do offer a lot of capability for the price. Secondly, what needs to go in the basic IFAC? I'll talk about that. So I think one of the best things about these particular IFAX is that they are purpose-built to address the March algorithm, not only with the components, but also with the design. And I'll show you how these can be both open one-handed later. That's what I'm kind of getting at there. So what's March? If you've never been exposed to this concept through a TCCC class or by other means, it's kind of like a cheat sheet to help you get through a quick down and dirty trauma assessment. Now, most of the military has moved or are moving in this direction of teaching this method, not that you should follow the military's cues and everything, but this really is a data-driven way to keep someone alive long enough for a higher level of care to help. And I think the only people that aren't moving this way 
are the national registries. That's your EMTs and paramedics. They're still doing the ABCs in their trauma assessment. So what I think I'm going to do is just go through March with some of these kits. I think that's the best way to show you how you address everything inside or what really goes or should go in an IFAC. And I'll do that with a pocket kit, I think, because I want to show you how much capability you get out of this tiny little thing. So first off, just looking at the pouch, it has these red grab handles. And like I said, this is meant to go in that SOB kit. It's just the inner, I believe. It's got your Made in the USA sticker. And I can tell it's all hand sewn. Everything's really high quality. I mean, look at that. Oh yeah. All right, so opening this, oh, and by the way, you can tell right off the bat when a nylon or a nylon pouch is of high quality because of how tightly woven it is. Some of the other like Chinese knockout pouches you get, it just doesn't look the same. And that's really how you're gonna tell quickly. All right, let's open this sucker up. And if you see me jumping around, it's probably because I had to cut some stuff out. I talk way too much and I, want, I don't want it to be like an hour long video. So let me show you to open this one handed by the way. Just kind of fling it, put it down, open it up so you can get to the contents inside. But I got two hands now. And it really is like a little taco of goodness inside, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so it's got some elastic bands to put your Sharpie in and some other components I'll talk about later. First thing you're gonna do is put your gloves on. You don't wanna miss that. Get all that nasty body fluid or whatever on you. So M, massive bleeding in March. How does this kit address that? It's got regular compressed gauze. It's got quick clock gauze. It has a compression bandage and you can use this duct tape for really anything. So don't get too wrapped up in having regular gauze versus just quick clot gauze. I mean, they, they do pretty much the same thing. The quick clot is just going to do it faster, but this works just fine. Then your compression bandage is going to go over that gauze you packed to start the clock on your body's ability to clot. All right, the only thing this kit doesn't come with is a tourniquet. And really it's because it's a really compact pocket kit. This is what goes inside of that SOB kit where it would be attached to the bottom. So how I'm gonna solve that is just by pairing it with this stud kit. And yeah, this stuff will be going in my EDC backpack. It's just a Vertex, I think it's an EDC ready pack, something like that. So this is the stud kit. It has your tourniquets that you can use to cut away clothing during your initial assessment, right? And do your blood sweeps. So you can see what's going on with your patient. And it came with a black tourniquet, but really I like to have stuff visible. So I switched it out with an orange one and I staged it. It's got some elastic on the side, so I guess it can be used for something other than a tourniquet. But, oh, this is made by Rothko, by the way. So I wonder if they honor their lifetime warranty with this. But that's that. And your tourniquet is just going to be utilized for any type of arterial bleed and your extremities. So you're going to stop that. And why blood first, right? So blood is your body's oxygen delivery device. And if you can't perfuse that oxygen throughout the body, you're going to run into some issues. And the more of that you lose and the more time goes by while you're losing that blood, the higher risk of shock and irreversible damage increases. So this is really the main reason why you want to get to that first. It makes no good or it doesn't make any sense to me to secure an airway if someone is just kind of bleeding out because you can't really replace blood efficiently if you're not at a hospital. All right, anyways, moving on to airway. Now here, you're just assessing the person's ability to breathe, look, listen, feel. You're going to do the appropriate maneuvers, whether it's a head tilt, chin lift, or a jaw thrust to assist them if needed based on their injuries. And now if that's not enough, this comes with a 28 French nasal pharyngeal airway. And not to mention it has the jelly right here and it's attached to it. You don't have to go looking through your kit, trying to find it. And really the goal of this is just to keep your tongue from blocking your airway. And there are some contraindications as to why you would use this versus an OPA or any other type of intervention. But really, let's get into the weeds. Maybe I'll make a video just on March and explain that more in depth, but that's fine for now. All right, moving on to respiration. So here, you're just watching out for the body's ability to breathe mechanically and exchange gas. So let's say there's a, 
a hole or puncture in the pleural space, and maybe it's caused a sucking chest wound. Now, this kit provides, oh, here's some antiseptic wipes, by the way. So this has some chest seals. And basically what this is going to do, it's going to stop the air from taking the path of least resistance in your body. That's what air is going to do. It's not going to want to go all the way through your body. It's just going to go through the hole. And that's going to cause some issues. And what you want to do is just cover that hole. Now, a lot of people kind of MacGyver some things. You can use an occlusive dressing or whatever. But chest seals really are kind of optimal. And they weigh nothing. And notice this is a twin pack. If you have an entry and an exit wound, I see some places have off-brand stuff and they only offer one. That makes no sense to me. All right. So what if you have a tension pneumothorax, which would be the buildup of air inside the cavity? Now you can recognize this by the presentation of crepitus or unequal lung sounds if you auscultate, or maybe even a tracheal deviation if it's been long enough. So what you want to do there is use a 14 or 10 gauge needle decompression or a decop needle to let that air escape. And that is just going to be kind of held in right here. All right. Moving on to circulation, and that's just verifying that the blood is reaching all parts of the body. And this can be done by cap refill, and you can do this at home. Just check in on your fingers and toes how fast your blood is going back and forth. You can do it on the stomach, press in, and see how fast that gets pink again. Easiest way to do that. Now, if a patient is going into shock, they may be cool, pale, have clammy skin, a fast pulse in conjunction with these symptoms are also an indication that the body is forcing that warm blood back to the internal organs. And those organs are greedy. And this is going to cause the body to cool. Now, this kit doesn't really provide a blanket, so I think I'll add that. Just because it doesn't take up much space. But anytime someone's going to be going into shock or you're seeing those symptoms, you're going to lay the person flat or supine and warm them up the best you can. And the blanket is a great way to do that. All right, so last, where am I at? I'm at H, so that's head injuries and the hypothermia. At this stage, you're checking the scalp, eyes, ears, nose for any signs of trauma, and we already touched on hypothermia with the blanket. So it's also sometimes referred to as a head-to-toe assessment, and I kind of like to think about this as an alien scan. If you've seen any of those old corny alien shows or movies, they put you in this tube and this laser goes down. So what... What you're really going to want to think about is assessing a person like that laser is going down, looking at every little thing. So that's a good way I remember that. And the E just refers to everything else in March E. So maybe it can also be referred to as your evacuation plan. But at this stage, you're really just going to want to be rechecking vitals, going over all of the interventions you made, and keep on monitoring the patient until you pass them off to somebody else. All right. So that's the pocket kit. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Oh my gosh, so much stuff. So there's really a lot packed into this thing. That's why I like it so much. Let's go over the bear facts. Where do I put them? All right, they don't come with the dog hair, by the way. Let's just open one. All right, so when you get it, it doesn't come with a tourniquet on the side and the shears, but I added them because I think it's really important to have extra stuff has the elastic um, bands on the side. It has some reflective material. And you got your refuge medical pouch. And this is big enough, you can put whatever kind of medical identifiers or unit patches that you want on there. And yes, these are red, because I want them to be visible. They're gonna be in my cars and around the house. Or our, I'm, not real, I'm not worried about camouflage or your tactical colors. It's got a grommet at the bottom to let the water escape if you take a drink. Molly on the back, and it's got these cool throwing star looking attachments. I'm gonna have to figure that out in a, a little later. But once again, this can be open one handed. I'm gonna break my camera if I do it. And then your inner pouch gets exposed from this outer protective shell. And that's what I like about these things so darn much is that it's just such a high quality pouch that protects your capabilities inside. So let's go through this thing real quick. You're gonna open this up, and man, Oh, this is the one I already opened. Let me get the other one. See, I put that. <laughs> it doesn't come with this, this outdated little circa 2015 <laughs> needle in there. Let me get the other one. This one is the one that has not been opened. All right. 
same thing. Open this guy up. Ooh, and this one comes with an orange tourniquet. <laughs> the other one comes with a black one, so I like the orange ones way better, so I'm happy about that. All right, so right off the bat, you got all this organization here. And this is really purpose-built to go through March as well. And why is that? Because you got all your massive bleeding right here. M is the first thing. It's the first thing you see. You got your gloves. You got your tourniquet. And yeah, you're going to want to take this out of the plastic and stage it before you put this thing in the service. It's got your pressure bandage, tape, marker, and I'm going to put a, another needle here. And it has your scissors, so you can cut away anything you want to. And back here looks like all your airway and your respiration. It's got a burn tech dressing in there. That pouch is pretty big. I guess you can stuff some more stuff in there. So we got your burn tech. We've got some abdominal pads. And another 28 French. And I guess maybe they put these here because sometimes when you're putting on chest seals, you have to clear some blood so they stick. So you can kind of wipe away at stuff. But I mean abdominal pads, you can use these things for anything. More chest seals. Okay. Talked about all this. Don't forget your Sharpie to write on your friends. More quick clot. And look at this. This is like a little trauma pack. I assume they do this because they probably build these in mass and they just kind of stick them in there. That's probably how their process goes. But opening this up, let's see what we got. We've got some more compressed gauze. We've got a survival blank or a survival blanket. And this is a much more comprehensive kit. You really have to add nothing here. That's why this is really the first kit I think you should get. You've got antiseptic wipes. You've got duct tape. So many uses for this. And look, I wonder how they did that. It's just like a little plastic. This is like what I do. I have these things everywhere, but just like half the size. Maybe I should do it like that. So that's an awesome idea. And you got a cravat, which is nice. Um, you can sling and swath somebody. It does have some safety pins in there. And you can even use this for the airway to kind of attach the tongue so it doesn't fall back. All right, so we just have some conforming stretch bandage. What else we got in here? All right, some more abdominal pads. Some woven gauze sponges. <laughs> This is an eye shield, and then these are your ocular bandages, and some more gauze, tons of gauze. So you see what I mean? There are so many things that you can do with this kit. So comprehensive. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. What goes in a trauma kit? You need a way to stop bleeding, secure an airway, take care of respiratory problems, assess circulation and shock, and then the odds and ends to take care of everything else. So why would you want to choose either one of these kits? For me, the pocket kit, maybe you have a college student, high school student, wife, girlfriend, anybody who carries around a bag, really. The thing's small enough, compact, you're not even going to notice it in there. And it really makes no sense not to have it. Maybe a first responder can put this in their BDU pocket. A pro 2A law enforcement officer can have this in their patrol bag. Or just a guy like me who's going to carry this around their backpack. Speaking of which, if I was in charge of procurement, I'd probably be buying some bear facts for every single patrol car and then some supplemental pocket kits for the individual officers or whatever kind of agency you work for. So what I'm trying to get at is these can be used in so many different kinds of situations. And by the way, this morning I woke up to a car accident right outside the property and I was going to be finishing up these videos on the IFAX. Can't make this stuff up. If that wasn't a sign, I don't know what is. In the bear fact, just get it. You really can't go wrong with this thing. And uh, I'm assuming anything they have to offer. I haven't checked out everything, but if it's like this, you shouldn't have any problems. This thing really is the real deal. So what I'm going to do is insert these into my systems, and I'll probably report back in about six months. Get some use out of them. I'll be carrying this around at work. So why do I like these? I mean, really three reasons. They've got the highest quality combat proven components inside. No cheap stuff. The pouches are purpose driven. I mean, you can't, there's not much to say about them. They just work. And the cherry on top is the people seem like they're pretty cool. So I like that. 
All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. So I've got some more mythical related and EDC type videos coming out in the meantime. So uh, keep an eye out. Essential gear out.